Today's guest is a guy I went to school with, Billy Lawson. He's, he's the owner of Candy's Creek Custom Candles, and he makes candles, if I can get it lit. It's going to be a great discussion. You're going to really enjoy it. Uh, are you working in Dayton now? I used to work in Dayton. Oh. Yep, I used to work over there. I worked over there for, I can't tell you how many years. I worked at Suburban Manufacturing and Goodman uh, Company that made uh, heating and air units. Then I left from there once Goodman moved all their head, uh, stuff back to their main headquarters in Texas. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to make that relocation. So stayed here and been working here, uh, lived here all my life. Um, how long, how long did, did they do that transition? That transition probably lasted probably a couple, three years. Uh, worked right up, well, they gave us notice so, you know, we were able to kind of reach out to other places and stuff too. Like uh, what, 08 or 09 or? You know, I can't really remember. Uh, I think that might have been closer to 09 because I took a job uh, in Chattanooga in Red Bank mm -hmm. uh, at a, uh, automotive machine shop mm -hmm. um, back in 09. So it was right after that when they started moving. Probably the bad economy affected it. It did. They wanted to start, you know, trying to consolidate everything. They had a factory over in Fayetteville in the, uh, Tennessee, and they also had a factory in Dayton, and their mm -hmm. main headquarters was in uh, um, Houston, Texas. So they basically started out, they consolidated the Fayetteville plant back to Houston, and then they hit Dayton and brought the Dayton plant back to Houston, so they had everything in a new, one neutral site. That was a pretty good unit, wasn't it? A Goodman? Goodman I've used a lot are, of them. A Goodman unit was a real good unit. Therefore, when I first started there, we um, we were, we were making room air conditioners, uh, window units, mm -hmm. and um, uh, GE approached us and wanted us to start branding our units with mm -hmm. the GE brand, and so we started running the Goodman units side by side with the GE units down the line, uh, making uh, window units. Uh -huh. And uh, we did a lot of testing. I was involved in a lot of the testing and stuff that we did up at uh, Appliance Park in Louisville and um, with the uh, transition from our units over to their units. So basically, if you was buying a Goodman uh, window unit, mm -hmm. it was basically a GE unit. I mean, they come in and wanted to redesign the whole uh, air, condition, mm -hmm. uh, air conditioning side of it so Goodman got, I guess, a bonus there because once GE pulled out of their contract, we still had that implemented in mm. in the Goodman uh, units. So we slowly started transitioning out of the window units and started building strictly just uh, heat pumps uh, at the Dayton facility. Mm. They it did all the condensing units in Fayetteville and Houston, but we did basically all the the inside units. It was. Did they have a lot of employees? The day then, unit probably had probably 125 people. So fairly good amount. Fay Fayetteville was a little bit bigger. They probably had three to 400 people. Now, the Houston facility was huge. I visited, uh, made a trip down there uh, once, and uh, I was totally surprised how large it was. How did you like driving that far every day? Was it, what, did it take you 25 minutes or so? No, no. Well, I had to deal with the ferry. Oh, I had to cross right. the ferry every day. Golly. Basically, I told my wife, I said, if I'd taken a movie camera and I could have drove, filmed it going across the river as the bridge was being built, mm -hmm. I could have pieced everything together and slowly watched that bridge being built in one clip. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, I didn't did do that. Did it cost to go? I can't. I went across the ferry. It but did. It seems to me like it was like uh, five dollars a day or something. He he gave he gave people that worked over there kind of a, you know a discount. We'd pay like once a week. And stuff like that. What would you do? Write them a check, or how'd you do that? Just every Friday, as I'm going across, I just tally up, you know, for the week before. I know. wonder how long they had. I guess they had the rights to do that. It was their ferry, mm -hmm. right? And I can't tell you how many times I pulled up there at Blythe's Ferry. And there'd be a Coca-Cola truck off in the water, you know, where it went up on the ferry and couldn't all, couldn't get all the way up there mm -hmm. and the back end would drop off. So we would, we would, you would have to sit there and wait till a, a record would come to be able to lift that 
trip back up off so it could get back up on the ferry. You had to call yeah. it. Well, you couldn't call in work and tell them you're going to be late. Back then, no, no, you couldn't. Because it wasn't come on the phone. Yeah, we didn't have any phones. How long the ferry? Yeah. How long's that ferry? How long's the bridge been there? I want to say fifteen years, twenty. It's probably been twenty years. Uh, I mean, what, two thousand four? So you had you had fifteen years of crossing that ferry. I didn't quite have that long because, like I said, I quit working in Dayton in two thousand nine. My best recollect, recollection. But see, I worked before. I worked at uh, I worked at Goodman probably thirteen years. Uh -huh. and then I worked at Suburban Manufacturing right down the road for probably another three or four years. Mm -hmm. So a combined total of probably 18 years mm -hmm. uh, going across the ferry. But at the very end, I, I don't know exactly when they actually got the bridge built, but um, I'll, I'll just confess now, but once they got the bridge built and they had the cones, you know, still blocking the roads mm -hmm. off yeah. and everything, I'd just bypass them and just go on straight across the bridge before they even opened it. I guess and a lot you, of people were doing I that. guess everybody was doing it. A lot of people were doing that. You know, if I, we ever got caught, I'm sure we would got got a ticket. You see, or here recently, somebody that they had that lady got killed. Yeah, that deputy yeah. from Mexico County, and they like, say that was very. It's pretty common for people to run. Up. I don't see I, I why they don't block that off or do something. I mean, they they've got a ramp there now for the boats and uh, you know to unload your boats and stuff there, but. Wouldn't you not have to not be paying any attention? That, or just I mean, not familiar with the area, and, not, and of course he was new, new to the area. Yeah. They they said I've been and, nervous or something, right? And you know he might might not have been paying attention. Might have been on the phone with his wife or something. Yeah. But the lady that was in the back seat, she was local. Yeah, and you would have thought that she would have said something to him that hey, you know this right here dead ends and. She you know, might from, have, and he couldn't hear. Or it, something. It, who knows? Yeah, I mean, who knows? Nobody will ever know. But, uh, but boy, it was that a sad really situation. Con that really connected. Uh, it, was it one family that owned that ferry? You know, like, I don't know. I, I knew the man that owned it. He was a very, very nice man. I can't think of his name. He had seems to me like he he had a construction business in Dayton, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, how long did it take to get across? Uh, it probably would have took ten minutes, fifteen minutes, maybe. But the guys, it's funny because at Suburban when I worked there. They knew that, you know, hey, if I'm late or something, yeah, it, you know, it's, you yeah. know, I don't know how many times I went in and told them, I said, hey, you know, the ferry, this or that or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, I just want you to know that, you know, I hope this don't affect my job, but, you know, there's going to be days that I'm going to be late and stuff. Yeah. Because, uh, it's out you of my probably control. weren't the only one that, worked, that had to do that. Right. Well, I was the only one at that particular company oh. uh, that, you know, worked yeah. from, you know, from Cleveland. But, um. I'm sure you know there's a lot of you know a lot of other places, but you know companies work uh, good with me. You know both companies, Goodman and uh, Suburban, and you know I was I was pleased with that. But, Did you uh, go there from Brown Stoves? I went from Brown Stove. Let me think. Let me uh, trace everything. I went from Brown Stove to Magic Chef, and then from Magic Chef, Whirlpool come in and bought them out. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of hesitant about thinking that, you know, they were moving, they were going to move their engineering department up to wherever it was, yeah. Illinois, uh, somewhere up north yeah. around uh, that area. But uh, so I, I took a contracting job and started doing uh, engineering contract work. So I went down to Roper in uh, Lafayette, Georgia, and worked there probably six months and worked with a bunch of old retired GE uh, uh, contractors that had retired from GE but wanted to come back that wasn't re basically ready to retire, so they went into contracting. Mm -hmm. And I worked with a bunch of them. I was probably the youngest one out of the bunch at the time. And I won't ever forget, um, I was single at the time, um, and uh, one of the older contractors was from Louisville. And he's a little old man. He kind of reminded me of Yoda from uh, mm -hmm. Star Wars. Yeah. And um, he drove a little Volkswagen van. And um, he said, Billy, you said, you ever been to the Kentucky Derby? And I said, no, uh, I can't remember his name offhand, but uh, I said, no, I haven't. He said, would you like to go? I said, yeah, yeah I would love to go. He said, well, I'm, this was like on a uh, Friday. He said, I'm leaving out tonight. He said, I'll stop up there at the Cleveland exit, pick you up, we'll head on up to Louisville uh, for the Derby that weekend. And um, I said, great. So... Met him there, got in his little Volkswagen van. I don't know if you remember those older little Volkswagen vans. I mean, it just had a flat face on them. Yeah, you're sitting on yeah, the You're sitting right yeah. there on the top of the road. And he drove like, I don't know what, scared me to death all the way from Cleveland to Louisville. Yeah. Got up there in the middle of the night, 
I thought, man, we're not going to get in a hotel room or nothing. He said, I want to take you someplace. Now, this was like 11, 12 o'clock at night. He takes me to some, best I can remember, looked like a biker's bar. Uh-huh. He walks in this place, and it's like everything stops. Huh. They look at him, and I, for the sake of me, I can't remember his name. But everybody started hollering at him and clapping and everything. He was like a superstar there. And, I mean, they, 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 they I was going, man, who am I here with? Yeah. But um, come to find out, man, he was, you know, very well known in the Louisville area and everything. And then I had no idea. He never talked about it or anything. But we couldn't find a hotel to uh, stay that night. So we ended up sleeping in the van and had to change in the van and everything going to the Derby. Yeah. Here we are going to the Derby yeah. looking like I don't know what. Yeah. I wish, wish I'd had pictures back then. But uh, got to the Derby and uh, all these women here with their fancy dresses. Yeah. And I saw... Uh, uh, the only celebrity I saw was the guy that played uh, the man from Atlantis. I don't know if you remember uh, Patrick Duffy. Is that oh, yeah, Patrick Duffy. Yeah. yeah. Saw him in, in one of the betting lines. Yeah. And, um, just standing but, there like a normal yeah, just person. Yeah, just standing there like a normal person. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't, I mean, really, I mean, that's... I went one time, or maybe I went twice, but uh, I never saw any celebrities. Yeah. That's I the only one little, I ever saw. I believe it's a little build up, don't you? It is. It's not... Uh, it was an experience for me. I'm glad I got to go. Well, you I mean, got to walk a long ways, don't yes, you? Yes, yes. I mean, yeah, like the best forever. I can remember, I mean, we did more walking than we did anything. Yeah. And uh, the the lines, the, the crowds and stuff. I you mean, can't even hardly bet I don't, the lines are I mean, slow. we probably seen like one race, one or two races. Everything else is prompted on the TVs yeah. and stuff like that. I always in the line, I always think, well, they're going to start racing before I get to the end of this line. <laughs> yeah. I got it. And nowadays, with your cell phones, you don't have to worry about those lines. You can just, I guess you, you want to place a bet or whatever. I bet that's really helped those lines. Probably has. But Probably boy, has. it was hot when yep. I was there. God, yep. it was hot. Yep. And concrete everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yep. But that was, that's, you know. Oh. Maybe he was some kind of a jockey or maybe he was from there. <laughs> well, he was from Louisville. He he uh, retired from uh, GE Appliance Park mm -hmm. up there, so you know he'd lived up there all of his life and mm -hmm. stuff. I don't know if that was just a place he always went. Yeah. And like I said, all these this crowd was like my age at the time. I was probably in my uh, early twenties, and I mean here he was in probably his mid sixties, early sixties, and mm -hmm. uh, I mean they just treated him like a father figure or a grandfather figure and everything, you know. Maybe something else. He had some good stories to tell. We got about the same birthday. You're the what, the eighth? November the eighth. I'm the tenth. Yep. Be coming up on the big five nine here. My friend Alvin Calhoun is on the third. Yep, Alvin's on the third. I remember Alvin. Alvin's a good friend of mine. We uh, we grew up together. Uh, started out uh, in elementary school at Michigan Avenue. Played basketball for uh, Coach Joe Spencer in our fifth and sixth grade years there. Mm -hmm. Alvin's tall. Yeah, Alvin's Was he real pretty tall. tall then? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. me, I mean, I was kind of short and stumpy, and he was tall and slim, mm -hmm. and we always, we basically always battled against each other <laughs> competitively and everything. I, I remember when we went to, and I just ate uh, lunch with Alvin here a few months ago, and we were talking about, um, I just remember the, when we had our award ceremony at the skating rink, you got MVP, and I got best offense, <laughs> and uh, I said, that's, I still remember that, I still, I still have that MVP trophy. Mm. For Michigan but, I mean, not Avenue. the MVP, but the best offense, yeah, for Michigan yeah, Avenue. Yeah. And I said, I wanted that MVP trophy so bad. But, I mean, we had a fun, competitive uh, time playing basketball against each other and everything. So, uh, Alvin's a good guy. He really his is. Dad, his dad and my dad was both in the car business back in the day. And um, Glenn. Glenn Calhoun, mm -hmm. yep. And um, what was your dad? Where was your dad's business at? Well, he had business down with Luther Pullen down uh, – on a, with J.T. Hahn and Luther mm -hmm. Pullen and all them uh, mm -hmm. with the used cars and stuff. Uh, Coon, been, Coon Dog. Coon Dog, yep. Yep, remember Coon Dog. Uh, we had uh, uh, Luther Pullen, J.T. Hahn. Um, there's some more I can't remember. Um, I know who you're trying to think of. I can't think yeah, of. Yeah, uh, uh, you had the Chases. Uh, yeah. It was Bill Chase and his brother. Harry Chase. Harry Chase, yep. Ted uh, and Bert. Ted. Remember Bert? Yep. And, um, Bert died, didn't he? You know, I haven't... Bert, Bert I, I would think... I, I would think Bert, Bert's I, Joe's dad, I believe. I, he was, I always got them confused. Yeah, I mean, all those chases, there was a bunch of them. I couldn't... I remember that. Yeah, I think, I think Bert was Joe. But, um... 
I so, changed oil for a while at Ken's Auto. Okay. During that, towards the end of that era. Yep. I guess. Yep. See, Clayton used to be like, in Boaz, Jack, Alabama, no. used to be the used car capital of the world, and then this odometer tampering uh, yeah, come I, in with 60 minutes and everything and shut everything down. Uh, there was a Jackie Johnson. Remember Jackie, Jackie Johnson? Jackie Johnson. That's who I was trying to yep. think of. Jackie, Jackie Johnson, Johnson. Dad and Jackie. Uh, ja uh, Garner Gold worked for him, didn't he? You remember Garner Gold? Yeah, I remember Garner Gold. Yep. I hadn't yep. seen him in it forever. I remember when JT got sent to the uh, federal penitentiary mm -hmm. for rolling odometers mm -hmm. back. Dad and Jackie went up in Jackie's uh, RV when JT was getting out and uh, picked him up and brought him home. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, Dad thought, I mean, well, JT's still living now. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, he come by here. A few months ago and brought a, I say a few months ago, you know how that goes. Oh, yeah. Uh, it yeah. brought uh, Ben Moore by. Okay. I was trying to get Ben Moore to come on here and trying to get J.T. Hunt. Oh, I would love to hear some, some, some of those stories. I would love to hear some of those stories. Yep, yep. J.T., uh, let me tell you this little story. Um, me and my dad, I used to, uh, he, my dad had a car hauler also, and he hauled cars mm -hmm. on top of uh, having a used car business. And uh so he was home, went down to Miami, Florida at the airport to pick up a load for JT. And uh, we got down there and everything. My dad's car hauler would only haul seven cars. We got down there and there were eight at the airport. So he calls JT back and he said, JT, he said, uh, I'm down here to get these cars, but my hauler only hauls seven cars, but there's eight down here. He said, well, Billy's with you, isn't he? No, I was 12 years old at the time. He said, yeah. He said, put him in that uh, eighth car and let him drive. <laughs> he, he was said he, serious, wasn't he? He was serious. Yes, he was serious. And Dad, that was back before we had cell phones. Yeah. So I remember Dad on the payphone there talking. He said, are you serious? He's only 12 years old, uh, JT. And, you know, I just hear Dad's side of the conversation. Mm -hmm. But um, he told me, he said, uh, you know, afterwards and everything uh, that, you know, JT insisted. He said, I'll pay him 100 I think it was $100 to uh come back or to drive a mm -hmm. car back. And uh, so I was outside, 12 years old. Yeah. Heck yeah, put me by. I'd been driving the back roads and stuff like that, you know. you know, But not on the interstate. Not on the interstate or nothing. Well, Dad said, just stay behind me, you know, just follow me. It's a straight shot up the interstate there through Florida. And I said, okay. Well, I made it fine up to there. Made it fine as we crossed the Georgia line, got on up, and Atlanta hit. Mm. And I freaked out. I lost my dad in the traffic, and I Golly. didn't know what to do. And it was luckily it was at night, in the middle of the night. Not not a lot of traffic. Not a whole lot of traffic, but somehow I, I, you know, got broke up from him and everything. And I made it through, and he was parked on the side of the road once on the other side. Of the I bet road. he was scared to death. He yeah, he was scared to death. And I saw him, and he saw me, and I guess in his rearview mirror, and he started pulling out, and I got in behind him and followed him the rest of the way to Cleveland. That's a trip I won't ever remember. I drove from Miami, Florida, Cleveland, Tennessee when I was 12 years old and got $100, and I thought I was the richest person in the world. Yeah. And um, I won't ever forget that story. That's J crazy, really. JT didn't have a care in the world. He would put anybody in the car just as long mm -hmm. as he could get his cars back to his shop. Mm -hmm. but. <laughs> but back then, people drove more. It wasn't, yeah, as, un it wasn't as unusual as it no, would be uh, today. No. I mean, still unusual. Right. I mean, I don't know if I would tackle that at 12 years old mm -hmm. nowadays. No. Because of, the, you know, the way traffic is, the way the drivers are. Can I mean, you get a hardship license at 14? Didn't they have a certain thing I've like never that? Heard they that called before. it a hardship license. Yeah, I know you get your learner's permit at 15. Yeah. But, I think uh, maybe there was a hardship license. Yeah. Uh, so. Not, you may be able, yeah. but, I mean, I don't think that would be considered I'd a hardship. I'd hate to drive that far. I'd hate to drive through that now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't but stand around long you distances. Did, but didn't Coon Dog, uh, didn't he uh, haul cars too? Mm-hmm. That was his main. He really wasn't yep. a car salesman. No, uh, he was a, uh, he was strictly. He always had real dark circles under his yep. eyes. What was his was real a, name? You know, I don't remember. I mean, every one of those guys seemed like they had a nickname. I've never had heard his name. One of them name. was Blackjack. Um, I don't know if you remember. Um, uh, oh, I can't remember his name now. He went to school with us. His dad, uh, they called him Blackjack. And then you had Hoyt Goins. Um, yeah, and uh, his, he had a son. I built his son's house. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, I his daughter, I knew his daughter, uh, Gina, uh, uh, from high school. She was mm -hmm. a year older than uh, mm -hmm. us. Did, uh, you was class of 84, too? 84, yeah. Okay, I was. You going to the reunion? 
I'm trying to. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get to go or not. It's going to be a last minute thing, but uh, it's like the twenty fourth or something. Right now, my daughter was just born uh, yesterday. Uh, she went through. God, you're problem. starting uh, oh late, aren't you? No, I've got three grandkids. Oh, your so your daughter. My oh, that's right. Your wife's. That's yeah. why your wife couldn't come because she was. Having yeah, she. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not having another kid. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay. no. Uh, but my daughter. Uh, yeah, she had her first uh, child. Uh, it was a boy. She suffered through probably 36, 38 hours of hard Golly. labor. They ended up having to have a C-section. Mm -hmm. So my mom, or my mom, my uh, wife is, you know, taking care of her along with her husband. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm basically living a bachelor life like right now. They okay, doing okay now? Yeah, she's doing good. She's getting to come home Monday. And um, so, How long uh, has she been there? She's been there since Thursday mm -hmm. in the hospital. But uh, like I said, she had it probably at 12.04. 4, 12.05 Saturday morning, and um, baby's doing fine. Got ahead of her. I was kind of jealous because I had ahead of her. But uh, so um, now I've got uh, two other kids there, uh, D. I've got my oldest son, uh, Josh. He's 32, lives in Knoxville. He's a PA, works in an emergency mm -hmm. room at Tenova. Actually, you had Tim Henderson uh, yep, on yep. here uh, recently. Yep. Uh, me and Tim, uh, his oldest son, Cole, Played baseball through middle school and uh, high school with jo my oldest son Josh. That's my youngest name's Cole. Oh, okay. that was a common name, wasn't it? Oh yeah, yep. Cole was a real right common then. name. And then uh, he's getting married in, uh, on la uh, Labor Day, so we've got to make a trip to Cincinnati up there uh, uh, to attend his. How do you wedding. like? How, what's it like having your kids not real close? That would you know that would bother me a little. It bit. It bothers me. At least they're not so far away, like across the country or anything. I mean, he's in Knoxville. My daughter lives in Sweetwater. My middle son lives here in Cleveland. He works at Mars. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, you know, I'm old school. I, I want the whole family right there close together and everything. But you can't fault them if they want to, you know, you know, spread their wings and branch out. And um, so, I want you know, them right here, but I don't want them right here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep, yep. Yep. It's a weird dynamic, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of hard to... It's uh, like I want them over there. Hard to understand, but yeah, yeah you want them within reaching distance, yeah. but you want your space too. I want to be able to go go there in 45, 30 minutes if I need to yep. do something. Yep. Of course, you can't get through town hardly in 30 minutes. Oh, anymore. no, no. I live out for Eureka, and for me to get from here... How far out, Eureka? You know where Candy Street Baptist is? Yep. Okay, I live uh, on Moore Road. If you turn uh, right off Eureka, there. Oh yeah, I used to I used to drive down when there wasn't but one house. Really? You, you talk about Moore Road b between Candy's Creek. I'm talking about Moore Road between Eureka and Van Davis. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. But it's, Moore Road, no, it, or is it Johnson Road? That goes across the street. It might be Moore Road too. There's one right. If you pull out of Moore Road, take a right. Uh, towards town on Eureka. And take a left. Take a left. I don't know. I don't remember that road, but it takes you over to Candy Street. It's either Johnson Road or or it may be Moore Road, too. I, I remember when there yeah. was one house there. Okay. I think his... He used to sell hay. I remember. Mm. You, you grew up right around that the whole time. But did you... Mm. Oh. No, I've lived out that, that area for probably about maybe, I think, going on 10 years. Mm. I was born and raised on the other far side of town off of Benton Pike on Old Parksville Road. Mm. And that's where we lived. And um, How far out of Old Parksville? It wasn't that far. Right, off you, uh, right as you turned off Benton Pike, I was probably like the third house down on the left. And Close I, to, uh, what's his name? The auctioneer? Uh, ben Lewis. Lewis. Yeah, Ben yeah. Lewis mm -hmm. and Bebo Lewis. This side of, uh, this side of uh, Ben's house. Yeah. Yep. But, uh, so after my dad uh, retired, he built a store there, right there at the corner of Menace and Benton Pike, uh, right there in front of the school that used to be. Uh, uh, he started, he built the store up, and then ended up selling it to a guy named Don Brown. Uh, oh, see, that Menace Road. You mean the you know one that's that right convenience across the, store now? Yeah, the ones that's right across the street where it used to be Jack Evans' garage. Yeah. Yep. Years ago, and then I Jackie moved in there Thursday. Okay. First I time I've been, I'd been there. in there in a long time. So your dad there. started that one. Yeah, he built that from the ground up. He bought he bought that property, and his initially was going to build a, a convenience store there, and then put many warehouses on mm -hmm. the back side of the property. Mm -hmm. And he kind of deterred. That's back before they, you know, I'd never heard of many warehouses. Yeah, that's... and he'd got that idea from somebody. And I thought he was crazy at the time, <clears throat> but then he decided uh, again. 
putting the mini warehouses in and he just mm-hmm. built the store. Mm-hmm. But he built the store himself. I mean, hands down, he built it from me. He had the concrete laid, the pad laid, mm-hmm. the tanks put in um, and everything. But he built the store himself. I, At I the time, him and my mother was divorced and he built a, a little apartment on the back side of the, mm-hmm. the store and that's where he lived. And when that big snowstorm come in, what was it, the blizzard of... 92 or, 92 or something. something like that. He was the only one that was actually open for people if they could get there. I mean, people would come in on, in on their tractors every which mm-hmm. way they could. But he just got up out of his apartment, opened the store up, and he was open for business. Went out there and shoveled his driveway the best he could. And for anybody that could get there, you know, he was there to sell them milk, gas, you know, uh, kerosene for their heaters or whatever. And when I had a little uh, <clears throat> Yon Mar four wheel drive tractor. That I had taken off and rode it from my house to the store and got, you know, whatever we needed. That's a pretty and good drive, too, wasn't it? It was a pretty I mean, good pretty drive. Good wide, on a little four wheel drive tractor yeah. that just kind of, but I mean, it just plowed through the snow. But, um, you know, at the time we had our first uh, child, my oldest son, Josh, and he was just a baby. We were having heat, uh, baby bottles up on the uh, gas grill outside. Mm-hmm. That's the only way we could, you know, get his baby bottles heated up and everything. So it was, uh, we had kerosene heat, but, you know, that's basically all we, all we had. Well, we hadn't seen a snow like that since. Uh, I don't before. think I want to see another snow like that. <laughs> I won't ever forget it, but, you know, it was, it was, a, it you was know, an experience. I don't experience. remember any time when that store wasn't on the corner. Really? It's been there as long as I can remember. So it used to be a house sitting there. I don't know. Uh, all I remember is that st- the store. store. Yep. Well, my dad went in, tore the house down, cleared the property off and everything, and built that store up. And That's probably when they didn't have all these regulations, as many now. A lot of them. Uh, he had a lot of you up now if he was going to do it. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now, I mean, back then, he had poker machines, but he had a, a, like a little game room with pool tables and stuff, mm-hmm. and he had the poker machines yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, that was back when they could do yeah. that. And, you know, that's back when, you know, that basically was legal. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, he was getting his machines from... Uh, the Taylors mm-hmm. uh, over there off of, <laughs> well, you speak yeah. Fantasy World? Yeah. Let's yep. see. I can't think of their, their names. They were Jim. big time. Jim. Jim, yep. He was big time into the amusement uh, side of it and everything after he started Fantasy World. That was about 90, 90, that's probably about 90. It was, uh, let me think. I think it, that might have been, I think he built the store in 89, if I ain't mistaken. Mm, yeah. It's around that general area, 89, 90, 91. I know my oldest son was born in uh, 92. Mm. So uh, it was right right around that general area, uh, time time period. So are you still working in Ch- Chattanooga? Or I work in Chattanooga with Mueller uh, uh, Water Industry, or the Mueller Group. We've got a plant yeah. here in Cleveland. I uh, work in uh, downtown Chattanooga at the Republic Building um, on the 12th floor. And um, worked there three days a week in the office, and I work on Mondays and Fridays uh, from home. But during COVID, we work, you know, straight five well, days from so home. Well, that's hard to get parked over there, isn't it? Uh, yes. Well, we've got a parking garage right there at the office building uh, that, you know, we've got a parking garage. You have to pass. go in, go up the elevator. Go up isn't the that elevator. Convalinka in, uh, law office there, Convalinka's? Uh, uh, yeah, they're, con- they're in the same building there yeah. that uh, we're in. Mm-hmm. I forget, they're like a couple, three floors down from us. Mm-hmm. What's well, an expensive building, isn't it? I forget. Somebody was telling me what it cost. Um, we've got a monthly car pass, uh, and they charge, I don't know how much for that pass. So Mueller's paying for those car passes and also the rent for that 12th floor. We've got the whole 12th floor. Golly, that's and, expensive. Uh, that really, I mean, you know, a lot of people say, you know, how can they justify that? looks like they just go out and get them own, their own uh, building yeah, and because yeah. um, it's just the uh, R and D uh, side of it on the twelfth floor there. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, I work there three days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and work uh, from home Mondays and Fridays, which I like. And um, I've got everything at home that you know I could do at work. So, can you be as productive at home as you can there? I can. Yep, I can kind of uh, actually be more productive because you don't have the distractions of people coming up to you asking you questions or this and you or that. Save forty five minutes driving. Save forty five minutes driving. Yep, forty five minutes coming home. Oh yeah, minutes. maybe maybe more. Well, actually, I'm, let me take forty five minutes will be a good day. Yeah, I mean, I I go down fifty eight highway, hop over on Amnicola, go down side uh, UTC and go in around the aquarium and go up through on Chestnut Street. Uh, that's how I get there. So, so, you, so you think it's quicker to go down 58? 
I would not deal with I, Before I worked there, I worked 10 years at a uh, um, machine shop in uh, Red Bank, mm -hmm. and I would go down the interstate. And I can't tell you how many times I've got caught in traffic, so I said I'll never deal with interstate. Just don't have, at least you know what how long it's going to take you. 58 is not that bad as long as school's not in. Once school start, uh, starts back up, mm -hmm. you know, you got Central High School down there um, that you got to deal mm -hmm. with, you know, school traffic, and you've got a couple of elementary schools down there that you have to deal with. But uh, and then you got your college kids at UTC that you have to deal with once you get closer to downtown. Mm -hmm. But uh, What time do you head out in the mornings? i got to be there at 8. I'll probably, at the best, I try to leave probably 10, 10 minutes till 7, 5 minutes till 7, just kind of give me, you know, mm -hmm. just just to, you mm -hmm. know, include for, you know, traffic you or stop whatever. get coffee or you have it? No, or, I've got my coffee, and then when I get on the road, I'm gone. I'm <laughs> not making another if you stop. stop. If you stop on the road, it takes longer than it does to it stop. It seems to me like, yeah. It, seems, it eats up more time if I can't, for some reason. If I don't have to stop. Now, coming home, that's a different story because as soon as I come home, I'm, my wife's calling, hey, stop at the store, get this, get that, whatever, yeah. and, you know, I'm having, having to do that. But uh, Where could you stop at the store at coming back? Because that one There's 50, a food city on 58. Aren't they closing it? No, not 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 the one on fifty eight. Oh, oh, yeah. They're closing the fresh and low on in, uh, 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 at the junction. Yeah, at the junction fifty eight to sixty. Yeah. yeah, they're closing that. Actually, I think they closed it. Uh, Wonder why they closed Saturday that. was the last day. You Seems know, like that no, would I've be got, a, a lot of business. My mother, I mean, my mother, my wife's uh, family lives out there. My uh -huh. mother in law and my my uh, brother in law and his daughter and stuff. They all live out in that area and they've. I don't know why they would have closed up because you've got a lot of people out there that depends on that grocery store. A lot when, of them. If not, you're driving all the way into town. And, uh, you're, you're 12, 15 miles from anywhere. Exactly. More but, than that, I guess. But I'll, I'll tell you, I'm not going to be selfish. I'll be more than glad when I get that Food City built here. And they're gonna, I think the grand opening is going to be in a couple of days mm -hmm. out there yeah. on 60. And uh, I told my wife, I said, hey, we've got our credit union here. we got our uh, groceries here. We won't ever have to go back to, uh, into town. <laughs> unless I guess not. Not passed under the I-75. Right. Yep. I think that's the whole idea, isn't it? Mm. Keep, it's sort of like, it's well, almost separating Cleveland like it in the street is. You know, it kind of makes me sad because, you know, before I moved over on the west side of town, I lived on the east side of town, so I was always going to the Walmart over there mm -hmm. at Treasury Drive yeah. and going to the Food City over there mm -hmm. on that side of town. Yeah. And, you know, you, you had your... You know, your KFC, you had your Wendy's, uh, you had a few Zaxby's yep. and stuff on that side of town. And once I moved over here on this side of town, dealing with the traffic on Paul Huff and everything, you've got basically everything you want on, on that side of town that you want. Mm -hmm. But I kind of feel sorry for people on the east side of town that they're not getting hardly no development uh, mm -hmm. off the bypass. Seems like the bypass has grown a little bit on that end of town, but not like it should for what... Uh, for the amount of people that lives mm -hmm. uh, on the south end of uh, Bradley County. It's almost like that's dividing up Cleveland into a whole other section or exactly. something. Exactly, yep. I mean, it's growing from the north and the west part of it, mm -hmm. north, but it seems like the, the south is just kind of stale right now. If you had a drone where you could watch the traffic for, for one solid week, you could figure out where where everybody's go, where it's going to go next. Yep. Yep, I remember when my mother and uh, dad uh, first got a divorce, he got the store in the divorce. Uh, she didn't want it she wanted, because he, he'd build it, and mm -hmm. so you know, she didn't contest it or anything. But she started wanting to find a piece of property that she could build her own store. Mm -hmm. So I remember uh, uh, going along with her, and she was looking around different areas and everything, and the McDonald's at the corner of, uh, uh, what's up, at the corner right there where uh, Food Line is, mm -hmm. the McDonald's. She actually looked at that particular piece of property. It none of that was developed at, at the time, and she almost bought that piece of property right there. And if she had bought that, mm -hmm. I mean, there's no telling what it would be worth. No she had held on to it, but she bypassed it and decided that she didn't want to get uh, go that route. And um, you ever wonder if all, if everything's going to be just done from home so much more and more? I mean, you're already working two days a week at home. I tell you, once COVID hit, I think a lot of people saw that, hey, you know, they can do as much, or if not more, and be more productive working from home. You remember but, growing up when everybody went to the store on Saturday and they didn't even go back to the store. Yep. It was, 
if you didn't go Saturdays, you went Wednesdays. Yep. And I or, remember also when Sunday Wednesday had the and Wednesday had the sales paper or was it Tuesday? I think Wednesdays had the sales paper. So you either went yep. Wednesday or Saturday. It's Saturday, Wednesday or Saturday. And then when it comes Sunday, everything was shut down. And I mean, you didn't you didn't even think about going to the store on a Friday night. Yep, exactly. Now, my wife goes three times a day. <laughs> yeah. Mine too. Or it's either her doing it or I'm doing it. So, but um, I can't yeah. get out of the, we can't get out of the habit. It's uh, times have changed. They they really have. I and, mean, really, it's so fast paced right now. And uh, you got to figure they are not bringing that to our house. UPS and FedEx, it, they're not bringing it cheaper. UPS won't even deliver to our house because we, we live up on the hill, and we noticed we, we found that out the hard way because we started losing packages that were being delivered by UPS, mm -hmm. and to come to find out, they were marking them non-deliverable and taking them back, and they were being sent back to wherever we ordered them from. And you so didn't ever even get them? We never got, even got our packages. They ended up, and that happened two or three times, and we decided, hey, you know, well, we actually went to the UPS place and asked them about it, they said, well, you know, you live on such a steep uh, uh, grade mm -hmm. that, you know, they won't bring it up there. And I said, well, FedEx has no problems. Our local UPS or U.S. Uh, Postal Service mm -hmm. has no problem. I don't know why UPS does. but uh, So we quit dealing with them. Anything that had to be with UPS, my, uh, my wife works at Central Drug and off of Peerless, and we would just have it sent there. Uh, anything that was going to be delivered by UPS, so that's handy. Yeah, it, it is, and you get a better shipping rate actually too. I noticed from having it delivered oh, to right? residential address versus a business address. So yeah, so it helps out you know both both ways, and that's well, the way going back to my candles here. You know, a lot of my uh, you know bulk packaging with my jars and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I can probably save ten fifteen dollars having it shipped to her work versus having it shipped to. Of course, I can't have it shipped to my house because they won't deliver, but having it shipped to my mother-in-law's or my son's house or whatever. I'm smelling that now. What, Are you what was the inspiration of that? What's that, Smoky Mountains? This is Smoky Mountain. All right, Smoky Mountains. Uh, but, I mean, what was the inspiration to get into this? Okay, we started this back uh, last November. For what, what, what's, what started it? You know, I had an idea with my daughter years ago that, hey, this would be something I could do with my daughter. I mean, she loved candles. She was going to Bath and Body, seemed like every week, buying candles mm -hmm. here and there and everything. And I got to thinking, I said, well, hey, as much as she loves candles and uh, the smell of them and everything, why don't I get together with her and, you know, kind of have a hobby with me and, you know, for something me and her can do and start making candles. No, well, it's it kind of like I can do that or something. Right. And, you know, it'd save her money. It would be something that, you know, I could spend time with my daughter mm -hmm. um, because Lord knows I spent a whole lot of time with my sons growing up playing baseball and hunting mm -hmm. and fishing mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But my daughter never showed much interest in sports or anything like that. I would have loved if she'd went into softball so I could have coached her in softball. Yeah. Uh, once my sons grew up and got out of baseball, I felt like I was kind of lost. But getting back to this, um, uh, this was something that I thought me and her could do, and she really didn't show much interest in it. And I thought, well, and I kind of brushed it off the side and everything. So November came up last year, and I said, you know something, I'm going to do this. And I said, I'm going to get my wife interested in it because this will be something that she can do in her re retirement uh, years and, you know, make a little extra income and stuff like that. And I started ordering the stuff. How did you know how to do it? Uh, YouTube. I just mm -hmm. Googled it yeah. and watched YouTube videos and mm -hmm. stuff and everything. My wife just kind of, you know, kind of brushed it off and said, you know, hey, you know, whatever, this is another little adventure you're wanting to go down and, you know, it'll probably come to an end or whatever. And I stuck with it and uh, got her interested in it and everything. But then I started thinking, the, you know, you can go to the store and you can buy candles a whole lot cheaper than what I'm selling my candles for. But they're paraffin, which all your uh, uh, Go Canyon candles, uh, I think it's, um, am I saying that right? Those big tall, oh, yeah. uh, I mean, yeah. they've got a tremendous uh, mm -hmm. fragrance throw, but they're all paraffin. When you're breathing that, you're breathing that right there. That's pure soy. That's no chemicals or anything. You burn one of those uh, Yankee candles, and they're all 100% paraffin, which is filled with petroleum. So I started so it's researching. Just like burning oil or something. Burning in your house. oil in your house. Mm -hmm. And I started researching that, and you know, finding out that was. Hey, there's a lot of people out there with respiratory issues and stuff that, you know, mm -hmm. they can't really handle this. Mm -hmm. And 
You can go to the store and you can buy a cherry candle, you can buy a lemon candle, you can buy an apple candle, whatever, but you can't go to a store and buy my candles. And they're unique, they're custom blended. Some of them, for example, all of these, well, we try to name all of our candles after past experiences, whether from my past experiences or whether it was from uh, my wife's past experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, for this one instance, this Papa's yeah, that, Pop. That one smells good. That's this one here was brought up by me. I blended two, uh, two different fragrances in with this one to come up with this uh, uh, scent right here. Mm -hmm. And it's coming back from memories I had with my dad and my grandfather because they'd sit there on the uh, porch and smoke a pipe and it, with cherry tobacco. Can you so, smell that today and go back to that porch? Yes, I can. Yep. And that's that's why, that's the story behind my candles. The Smoky Mountains that you have right there now, I mean, our family loved to go to Smoky Mountains, to uh, Cades Cove. Mm -hmm. uh, every year we, we would make a special trip up there, especially when my father-in-law was living, mm -hmm. and because he loved Cades Cove. And um, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, that candle there is basically a memory of, uh, of him, uh, of all of us going to the cove. This one here is in memory of my papa. I didn't bring the uh, Granny's Rose Bush, which is a, a candle that my wife had named based off of her grandmother. She had a little window unit there with a rose bush on the outside of her uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. window. Mm -hmm. And as the breeze would be blown from the air conditioner, my wife remembers when she was mm. a child, she could smell my uh, smell her grandmother's rose bush coming through that air conditioner. So we've got one fragrance called Granny's Rose Bush. So we kind of dedicate all of our flavors, uh, fragrances to a past experience or someone special in our life that's no longer with us. Something's worth so much more to me that has a story behind it. Yeah, and a lot of these candles do now. A lot of them don't. A lot of them will just be, uh, we've got one called Narnia. I don't know if you remember The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Oh, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. my kids love that movie. Mm -hmm. So we've got one called Narnia, but it will remind you of walking into an old library, smelling the leather and stuff oh, I on, love that. on, Don't the, you? on the old books. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's got a tremendous fragrance to it. How and, do you uh, come, how do you mix the color, the fla flavor, the, how do you mix it? Well, to, I wouldn't know how to start. Well, I, it all started okay. out with us just using one fragrance for candle and everything. And I said, you know, everybody that makes candles nowadays does this. Why don't we start taking this fragrance and this fragrance. And what I would do, I would put a Q-tip in this one, and I'd put a Q-tip in this one, and I'd put it in an empty jar, shut it up, shake it up real good, let it sit for a couple of days and come back and smell it. Mm -hmm. So that right there, you could get uh, an actual feel for what those two fragrances was actually gonna do. Well, if we liked it, you know, we would make a couple candles or wax melts or samples or whatever, and we'd start testing those. Making a candle is more scientific than what I ever, ever, ever thought of. There's a whole lot of math in it. You had no it. idea, did no, you? No, I mean, there's different size wicks. That yeah, I noticed this one has two wicks. It has two wicks. What's and specific about that? Does these have two wicks? No, these only have single wicks. No, that wick there is a size four uh, cotton wick, and uh, the double wick there is. Mm -hmm. If I put one single wick in there, I would have to go to a big, big huge wick mm -hmm. for it to get a melt pool all the way across and that's what you're looking for in a candle boy that when is it's scientific a melt pool a melt pool now explain that a melt pool is where the candle's melting as you see right there yeah so right okay. there is that's the melt pool if you was to blow that candle out right now it would have a big dip in it right mm -hmm. in the middle and then you'd have all this excess excess wax on the mm -hmm. sides now with those two wicks there you have to actually size that up uh the wicks up to match your container, so within, so that candle there is like three and a half inches. Mm -hmm. So it would basically take three to three and a half hours for that. Three and a half go, inches this way. Right. Yeah. It would basically take like three to three and a half hours for that to basically go all the way across. So if you're lighting that candle, and so it's for the pool to go for the pool yeah. to go all the way across. Then it's okay if you want to put it out because once it hardens back up, you're gonna have a smooth surface all the way across. So in other words, you want to light it and let it burn till it's all the way across. All the way across. Yeah. And then some. It's then fine. some. I mean, once it goes all but across, but at least let it burn till it. Till it's all the way across. If not, you're gonna have a bunch of tone, and that's so what. That's, that's what, what the one wick would do. The, well, two wicks or one wick, it doesn't matter. But that particular jar there, you can burn a bigger, larger single wick, mm -hmm. or you can burn two smaller wicks. The smaller the wick, the less 
you know, soot and uh, flame being so high and everything's going to be. So if so, it just had one, if it had was one sized big, wrong, it'd just be a, a exactly. it'd just tunnel out. Yeah. And if you put it out early before it goes all the way across, mm -hmm. it would tunnel out on you. Mm -hmm. And then you'd lose all that wax on the outside because once you go back to light that, you're either going to have to go in and manually melt that wax on the outside to get it leveled back down mm -hmm. again, or you're just going to have to let it burn down in that tunnel and have all that wax on the sides. And just throw it away. If you let it burn all the way across, my candles will burn all the, almost all the way down to probably a quarter of an inch before, before they go out and not burn anymore. They'll burn all the way to a How uh, many hours is this? What, burn time? Yeah. Okay, if I was the, to let this burn, how long would it go? That large candle there will probably get uh, 60 hours of continuous burning. Golly. These here will probably get 30 to 40. 60 hours. That's you, uh, We haven't actually tested it to see. Roughly two days, two solid days. Yes. Yeah. I mean, a little over, I mean, what, 60 hours? That's probably two, two, two and a half, three two days. And a, almost two days. Yep. Two, two days and four hours. No, well, actually, it was 48 hours in two days, correct? Yeah, 48. And then... Two, uh, two days and tw two and a half days. Mm -hmm. That's right. Two and a half days. We went to Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, a lot of but like I out. said, you know, there's a lot of testing involved in this. I mean, it's how, not, how far can I smell this? The larger I mean, candles, you'll probably... It'll probably be good in this room. It, it'll probably... Are you smelling it now? I'm smelling it now. Okay. It would probably, after it burns all across and gets going good... It'll, you can smell it as you walk in this room very easily. Now, these smaller candles, you would want to burn in a small bedroom or a, a bathroom or something mm -hmm. like that. A lot of people come to me and say, hey, Billy, you know, uh, you know a couple of people I've uh, sold to, uh, especially one lady at work, come up to me and said, hey, I can't smell this candle I bought from you. And I said, well, and then she bought a large candle. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what kind of setting? How, how's your room layout? And uh, she said, well, we've got vaulted ceilings and, you know, everything's open. You'll never uh, smell it. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, my candles wasn't designed to do that. I said, they're designed, you know, my large candles for a larger room that's enclosed, not a whole house that's open, with, especially with vaulted ceilings. And I said, my smaller candles are designed for, you know, your bedrooms or your bathrooms and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a smaller house or something, you know, if you've got a small living there, uh, space, you know, you can burn one of my smaller candles and, and get that. But um, these are 100% soy, no chemicals. Um, so it's so burning clean. It's burning clean. I don't see any black smoke. You don't see any black smoke, no. Now, I have had some that will burn, uh, you know, and have some of the black smoke. That's just because of the wick being wrong sized or mm -hmm. whatever. So yeah. you have... It, it's a trial and error process with these. I mean, you've got, I've got bags and bags of wicks, different sizes and everything. When we start testing, um, you know, the, we finally come down to these two here that seems to be pretty good. So I've stuck with those and those, uh, those two different size wicks have so, started so, really So these before. are sort of your standard sizes. It is. So That's you have the only this in the smaller? Oh, well, are you yeah, yeah, I have all the fragrances in both size jars, but I only offer two size jars. 14 you, ounce and an 8 ounce. Does the smell that you're getting around, is it coming from the the actual oil? Is it the oil, the pull of oil the burning? Pull, uh, well, once you pour a candle, uh, once you go to your wax uh, melder and you pour your candle out and you mix your fragrance up and everything, you got to pour your fragrance into your wax and mix it for two to three minutes so that wax breaks down in and, and binds uh, with the wax. So then it, got, then it has to get down to a certain temperature of like 135 degrees before you can pour it. Then you pour it into the candle slowly so it don't develop air uh, bubbles and uh, air pockets and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, let it set until it hardens. And it's best to let these candles, I try my best to let these candles set for two weeks. And that allows the fragrance to totally com uh, combine how, with when do the you, wick. How do you put the wick in? Well, you put the wick in first. How do you hold it up and keep it from pouring in? I've got uh, little fixtures that are made exactly for these uh, uh, jars here. That sort of holds it. A so guy, that's straight. Yeah, a guy. Yeah, that's straight all the way from the mm -hmm. bottom. I ordered a set of fixtures for my large jars and for my smaller jars. There's a company up north. Uh, um, basically, it's a family-owned business. A little lady started it with a 3D printer. And when I first contacted her, she asked me what size jars, what kind of jars, what was the company I got the jars from. And she knew exactly what type of jars. So she designed on her 3D printer mm. fixtures where I could just set my 
set this on here, put my wick in this little machine lock and press down, it would be perfectly centered. And it would, uh, plus she had the wick center, so it would sit on top of the thing that you just hooked the wick in. And then that would keep the wick straight so it wouldn't fall one side or the other. And uh, then you just pour your wax. You know, if you could have that, one of those stories, like on the back of this, how you, the story. Yeah, that would probably be good. I'm Because uh, candles can be bought anywhere. Exactly. With a smell, without a smell. Right. It's the story and the handmade and the care that's yeah. just the uniqueness. Well, I want to include that story with, um, I'm initially going to have a website. Mm -hmm. And I'm wanting to sell, actually I got in, into my first store, a uh, wholesale uh, with a store in Benton uh, this past Saturday, I made my first delivery up there to them. Was that the uh, Honey and Clo uh, Honey and Clove Bistro restaurant? Is that the new one? That's the new one. Uh, Where whereabouts are they exactly? Okay, uh, it's probably this side of uh, it's just this side of um, Benton Shooters, uh -huh. and it's just right outside of Benton. It used to be a vegetarian place on the right. Are you know, going out? As you're going as you're going north on 411, it's mm -hmm. on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. Just right, plat, uh, right past the, uh, uh, well, I want to say the police station. I believe it is a police station. Yeah. Yeah, that used to be a vegetarian restaurant, I think. Oh, did it? Okay. Yeah, real nice building. Okay, yeah, it's a super, super nice, nice building. Super nice building. But, um, you know, I want to give a, a plug for uh, her her restaurant. Uh, she, she allowed me, you know, to put my candles in there. Mm -hmm. She also has a, uh, her mother has a store on uh, in Benton called a, uh, Main Street Bakery, I think it is. Mm. Um, of course, she makes or bakery on Main. Mm. And, um, but uh, well, I like Ben, don't you? It's, I was my grandmother lived up there, and I spent all my summers on Reliant in Reliance on at the Web river, Store. At Web Store, floating the river and everything. Uh, me and my cousins, I won't never forget. We were up there, and they all climbed up on the trestle of the railroad bridge and started and wanted to jump off. And I said, well, "I'm gonna go up there, but I'm not gonna jump off. There's no way." And uh, so there was a bunch of us up there and everything. And <clears throat> I asked uh, one of the guys that I was with, I said, does the train ever run up here? And they said, no, nah, train <laughs> run up here on weekends. I said, okay. So we got up there on thing on the railroad bridge, and uh, I was sitting up there, and everybody else Golly. was jumping off. And me and another guy was the only two that wouldn't jump off. Yeah, I would jump off. And next thing we knew, we heard the sound of the train coming around the corner. Golly. And he started blowing his horn. And we started running back to... To the area that we could actually get off the track, yeah. and, you know, climb down the the side of the berm there, and we got halfway there and realized, hey, we're not going to make it. God, so that our that only scary choice moment. was to turn around and run back, and then because you had to run back to the deep spot, deep spot where they were jumping off, yeah. and ended up jumping off right there. And <laughs> from then on, you know, it, it wasn't no big deal then. Where, where, where was that from the swinging bridge? Did you ever go to the swinging no. bridge? No, no, this right here was just right up, right up from Webb's. You know where the swinging bridge is. You keep you go way up up the river. I don't know if it's actually a swinging bridge, but they yeah. called it the swinging bridge. You can walk no, that's across. A, that's up there next to the dam, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now this this was way down uh, from that. This wasn't that much further up river from uh, Webb's because I remember when we jumped in the river, the current was so strong that when you surfaced. You were almost at Webb's. You know, I, if you look on Google Maps, right there where you're talking about, because there's mm -hmm. some outfitters underneath there. Yeah. If you go to the end of that road, it just dead ends into the head of a spring or creek. Well, are you talking about the outfitter that's right there directly behind Webb's? No, there's another one. If you go up there past Webb's, take a left on that bridge. That, that, yeah, okay. and, and there's an outfitter underneath the bridge. I okay, say kind underneath of off, it, maybe off, off the, to the side. Kind of off on the left-hand yeah. side there? Yeah, okay, I know I know where you're talking about but, there. But if you look on Google Maps or some of the old maps, it'll say Postel hmm. Community. I wasn't and aware you, of that. And nobody else is either. I'm just the only one. Huh. Either it'll I've been say going Postel. Up yeah, I don't remember that. It must I, have been an old community. I remember my grandmother talking about that old house. As you go across the bridge and take a right to go up the river, mm -hmm. That old house that was kind of built back into the uh, mountain mm -hmm. there. Yeah, I used to uh, listen to my grandmother tell a whole lot of stories about it. It used to be an old hotel uh, back in the day and stuff. Yeah, and, I think I've seen pictures yeah. of that. But yeah, there's a lot, a lot of history up there. My my grandmother lived as you pulled off 411 there on the road going to Reliance. There was a big white house right there 
as you basically as you pulled off, and that's where she lived. Mm. And I'd spent I don't know, can't tell you how many summers. Well, uh, people don't realize her how pretty it is up at Webb Store. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. My cousin lives up past Webb Store, up way up there. Um, That'd be a Greasy Creek, right? Yep. She lives up there in Greasy Creek. She has no. Uh, Hardly no cell service. She said her and her husband sits up there, and when she gets off work, she said it's just like going back in time. Man, I wish I could do that, but, but I, I I can't stop but turn the TV on or we're we're too uh, we're too technology. And I don't want to, but I can't help it. Right, but but I also like you know going and, and experiencing that right there. If we put if we put our kids out there now. Doing something like that, they'd, they'd go, they'd go crazy. They'd, they'd go crazy the if first, they didn't, if they didn't have a cell phone. They'd or, go crazy the first six hours. Yep. And then the, about, I don't even about, know if they'd make it six hours or not. But if they could, they'd say, "Oh, yeah, let me read that book. <laughs> let me look at that magazine. Yep. Let yep. me do this thing here that's boring." The days and times of you know, I used to listen to my mom and talk about when she was growing up, uh, having a series and Roebuck catalog and everything. I remember when I was growing up having the J.C. Penney's Christmas edition. That, mm-hmm. You know, you could get, actually mm-hmm. go through, and actually yeah. the Sears. But yeah. she would talk about that old black and white Sears and Roebuck catalog. That you know, uh, it was like that thick. Yeah, you know, it was like that thick, and they, you know, now that's not even thought about. If you want to shop, you go to Amazon or whatever to buy whatever you need. And, it's just uh, all changed, had. I don't know whether to get mad or be glad. I don't know if the. Uh, I mean, it's just a, I mean, at least we still have those memories, but those memories are going to be gone very soon of the way it used to be because our generation, I mean, we're getting older. And I, stuff you ever watch the Waltons? They oh, have yeah. A play, like, yep. I, I watch that sometimes, but it's a little bit depressing. They yep. should have had more happier. There was always a tragedy. <laughs> the, uh, the church burned or the school burned or somebody broke a leg. Yep. That and a little but house I, on but the you prairie. know, that was probably more indicative of the times. It was probably, yep, yep. Yeah, somebody broke a leg, it was a big deal. Yep. Now we go to the emergency room. Well, or, if you think about it, all these hot days we've had here lately and everything, back then they didn't have no air conditioning and everything, and they made it okay. But I, I mean, had a friend of mine that was an uh, older guy, and he said that he grew up, and he said, uh, see, what was it he said? It was real profound, if I can put my thoughts together. He said, uh, um, I think he's, I can't remember. It was something like, something to the effect of, you don't know what it's like going out in the middle of the night and laying on the porch because it was too hot in the house yeah. to sleep. Yeah. Now think about that. Right. Yep. That and also, I mean, you didn't have any indoor plumbing back back mm-hmm. in the day and stuff. You got up in the middle of the night and had you. They uh, had a jar. They had a, didn't they have a jar to pee in? Yeah, a jar or something. Or if not, you'd go out to the house. I wonder outhouse. if women would use that same. I don't know how that would work. Either. Well, my grandmother used to talk about, hey, when I had to go or whatever, I'd go out to the outhouse, pitch dark. I didn't have flashlights or anything like that. I I'd guess I had, wonder if I had candles. They probably had candles or lanterns or something like that. But, you know, think about it, you know, no flashlights, no electricity. I mean, it's, it's a different time. It's a most different time. If but, you had, but I wonder how much you, money you'd, you'd not have to make if you lived like that. You wouldn't. I mean, really, if you think about it. You just property taxes and... Yeah, property taxes. Uh, you, if you didn't have cable, yeah. just so I'm not going to have cable. Yeah. I mean, I'd go crazy, but just... There's a lot. There's a I mean, lot. you think about how much we... How much your cable bill at home? Oh, my gosh. Let me think. It's probably... Well, when you say cable, I, are you just talking about internet? I don't because know. Because I, I stream I even, everything. I don't even know how those things are co- connected. I guess it's. A, I mean, I don't have I guess cable it's anymore. a landline at home, which nobody uses. No, I don't have a landline. But some reason you have to have. But right. then you got Roku. Mm-hmm. Then I got internet. Yep. Then I got something about a modem. And I've got YouTube TV. And YouTube. Then, I don't have YouTube TV. Yeah. I've got. I I bought a TV from. Uh, one of those smart TVs, mm-hmm. and uh, and I got the Roku thing. Yeah, and it and it, and I'm signed on to Peacock. Okay, through NBC. No, through some girl named Teresa. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> it says username Teresa. The only thing I can figure is is somebody <laughs> bought the TV, 
took signed it, up, and then took, took it, back. it back to the store, and I got that TV. And you're not, I don't even know a tree. I only tree right. I know was Teresa Evans, and she wouldn't have. <laughs> but it's only Peacock TV. It's yeah. not anything else on there. Well, but that's good oddly for you. enough, that's what the Olympics are on. Yeah, there you go. Have you watched any of that? I was going to ask you about that. No, I hadn't, uh, watched a little bit of the opening ceremonies. You, did you hear the, the, uh, yeah, the I, controversy I just, they had I just, over that? I just heard it at lunch today. Yeah, but I, I don't know why any type of sports organization wants to take, take a stance on politics it didn't used to be or like religion. That. It did not that's, used to be like that. That's not for them to do. Yeah. Uh, it you know, did not used to be like that. Isn't that private? Isn't that? That's exactly right, what it is. Yeah, you know, that's your but, business. Uh, this is my business. You know, I haven't uh, read a whole lot into it. I don't really know. I, I just I don't know either. And I just know it doesn't sound. I just good. know when I was watching part of it on the opening ceremonies, it kind of looked controversial. Oh, so to you? Me. Well, I didn't see. I didn't see it. I yeah, just, I, I, I watched some of it. I didn't. You know, I was just in and out, back and forth, and stuff. And why would they them, even bring that up? I mean, why even bring that up? I, 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 well, you know how. Times are now. But it's I mean, crazy. everything's either. Are that supposed it, to get my? Is that supposed to? I always have a problem with people bringing stuff up that's not going to gain anything. I mean, you should be celebrating these athletes that have trained and trained and trained. All your focus should be on them. It's all about give and me the backstories on them. Don't, exactly. Don't give me your political. You know, you've got this young kid here that's from a small town in Georgia that's trained all of his life, and this has been his dream. And had two left and, shoes. Or yeah, two whatever. Left shoes. Give me the story. His family, you know, couldn't, you know afford to help, you know, yeah. put food on the table and stuff, right. but he's worked and worked and worked and made himself That's where he's an I Olympian. That's what I want to watch. Yeah. I don't care what religion he is. Or... So, I mean, just let that political stuff, let the religious stuff, I mean, kind of push it back because, I mean, I'm a religious person and I believe in God, but, you know, some of these extremists out there, I mean, they take it to another level as far as politics, as far as religion. Yeah. And, I mean, I just... I don't agree with a whole, a whole lot of this stuff. I just don't know why they... I don't want the church and government. don't want the government and church. Exactly. It, that's exactly how I feel. And, but. you know, it'd be like you putting your political stance on the candle. It's not going to gain any customers. Well, I'll tell you, my saying in my little candle company business is I don't mind you sticking your nose in my business. <laughs> <laughs> that's my saying. That's what I tell everybody. I that's don't mind you sticking... I don't mind you sticking your nose in my business. Go for it. This is one business where you don't mind them sticking their nose That's in your exactly business. That's exactly right. Yep. But what do you think about putting the story on that? I like the ideal. I, I mean, do. if you could find room to, room to I, I write do. it, you I know? I like that ideal. And, I, you know, the smaller jar may be a little bit harder, but, you know, something like that, I, they, you might. You might Maybe the ones me. with the story are only come in the bigger jars. Maybe, but I try to make every one of my candles with a story behind it. You so. know, I had this... Uh, um, but, I mean, that's true. I mean, I've got all my fragrances in the large jars as I do my small ones, so you know, I could just put the store on yeah, the big Yeah, that makes, that makes it special. I, yeah. I went to uh, uh, Walter Presswood's down here, antique shop, mm -hmm. and uh, he was trying to sell me a bracelet or something. And so I said, why should I buy that, Walter? And he said, well, he said, that may have been... <laughs> <laughs> it, it, he said that may have been so and so that owned a big <laughs> manufacturer. I forget what the story was in Cleveland. Right. And I said, "Oh, it was." He said, "No." I said, "It may, may have be. been." <laughs> so I said, "Well, it sounds like a good story." So that's I bought out it. right there. That's out. I bought it, and I, and and every time I said, "Well, now this may have been." I said, it's been said that this may have been. There you so go. So it had a story, so yep. it was worth something. Then. Right. Remember, yep. That's sort of like show and tell on Fridays. Yep. Remember show and tell? Yep. Sure do. I always hated show and tell. <laughs> we didn't do it as much, I don't know, uh, at our school, but I mean. I, I remember, maybe it was maybe the first or second or third. I wonder why they did that. You know, I think that was part of getting over shyness and. I think it was too. Then you had 4-H that you had to yeah. participate in, and you had to do the muffins. I tell you the, um, the yeah, the cornbread muffins, yeah. which I always cheated. I always had my older yeah. sister make muffins. Everybody for me. did. Yeah. If you did, and, if you made them yourself, they'd have been. They yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I remember uh, I won the cornbread muffin contest one time, and it's just because my uh, older stepsister uh, made them for me, mm -hmm. and then the speech contest, I was. 
totally petrified of going up in front of people. At the, on the 4-H speech thing? Yeah. You know what the 4-H's are? No, I, don't, I, I used to at one time, yeah. but I don't, I don't remember oh, them now. Yeah. No. But, um, yeah, we had, to, we had 4-H. Do they, do they even have that in school now? I don't even know. I hadn't heard about it. Yep. I think they do. They do, Glenn? Oh, who, uh, I wonder the if... Ag, Tennessee Ag Department kind of... Oh, that, I wonder okay. if it's as big as it was then. I guess it's not. I think it is. Yeah. I, remember, I want to uh, find out who's in charge of 4-H in Cleveland. There you go. And have them, have come them on in. the show. And then the, then you had Junior Achievement, which was J.A. Yeah, yeah, that? I remember. But I never was involved. I wasn't an involved guy. Well, let me tell you a story behind this. I was in uh, Junior Achievement, and we had a company that made a, a ceramic knife sharpeners. That uh -huh. was our little deal that we mm -hmm. that we did. And I don't hope, remember a whole lot about it and everything, but I got voted as president of that of our company. And we had like three, four different other uh, mm -hmm. Uh, girls and uh, boys that were in it, and uh, for some reason, our company made company of the year. And when it got comp when we made company of the year, I got to go on a trip with the company of the year's president from the Athens J eight uh, chapter. Mm -hmm. And I remember Magic Chef took us up on their private jet to uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, <laughs> to the National Junior Achievement yeah. Convention. And I got to meet Dan Marino back when he was a quarterback mm -hmm. at uh, uh, for the Pittsburgh yeah. Panthers. He was still in college at the time. Uh -huh. And uh, I met one other celebrity, which I can't remember to this day uh, who it was, but he stuck out uh, from meeting him and everything. But that was a, a little trip on their private jet. I remember eating their little knickknacks and stuff they had in mm -hmm. the... That was a big deal, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a big deal, but it was a... They had a woman pilot, and mm -hmm. she'd let us come up to the, co uh, to the co uh, cockpit mm -hmm. as she was flying. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, that was a super experience. I was probably a sophomore in high school at the time. And... Um, but yeah, I won't ever forget that. That was that's one of those life changing memories there that you never something. forget. <coughs> but uh, if yeah. I had it do all over again, I'd have been more involved in high school. I think. Yeah, I wasn't a whole whole lot involved in it. Uh, you know, at times and was stuff. Was James but, Beatty in that? Seems like he used to carry a knife sharpener that he made or something like that. Yeah, I don't remember a that wet, name. A wet stone or something. I he lived out there on Eureka. Oh, did he? Right before you get to the ballpark. Okay, the two people I remember, and you may remember them yourself, you remember Kimball Presley? I remember that name. Okay, he was why? in my company. He was a lifelong friend of mine, still is. Uh, Where's he? Does he live up in Charleston? No, he lives down in, actually, he's a, uh, uh, works for, uh, I'm wanting to say now, I may be wrong, and if, you're, if you watch this, uh, Kimball, Kimble. I hope, uh, <laughs> that, you know, you don't hold me to this, but I think he uh, works for Dell uh, Computers. Um, in some in Austin, oh, yeah. Texas. Oh yeah, is he like a blonde headed guy? No, he's black headed. Oh, I yeah. got it all wrong, do it. Yep. But I think I know who you were talking and about. And then there was a uh, girl. In he always dressed pretty nice, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, I for mean, the time, I mean, yeah. you had your members only jackets yeah. and your, um, you know, your eyes on He was he was put together. You know, he was. Yep. I mean, uh, and he wasn't had, wearing a baseball cap to church to school. In other words. Mm, no, I don't. Yeah. So you remember another, Chris, who else? Uh, Trina Lane. You, well, I know that name, but I can't play. Tragically, it. she passed away. She had cancer here a few years back and everything. <coughs> but she was a super, super sweet girl. Mm. And um, um, even after she uh, became an adult and everything, she was, was she super a, was sweet. Was she our age? Yeah, she was our mm. age. And but that was two of the people that was in my, our, uh, you know, little J, uh, you know, junior we, achievement We had company. such a big grad, a big, there was like 2,400 students at Bradley. Yep. So you say, well, I don't remember them. That's not unusual for no. 2,400 no. people. No. Are you going to the reunion? I Probably, yeah. Yeah. No, I hadn't bought uh, our tickets or anything. They like probably I said, know no. me. Everybody else's age. <laughs> no, I mean, don't, don't go, go I don't that far, I don't go into that stuff, but I don't want to. I found out you... I found out you you don't regret the things you did. Yeah, you you regret the things you don't do. Exactly, and, and that's so, a good saying. That's so, you know, and I, that's I, good I advice. Just do it, man. Yeah. Just do it, and at least you don't say I didn't do it. Right. Nobody hates a click worse than me if I'm not in it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's so, a good saying. I'll have to remember that. So where do you sell these? Well, uh, right now we're just doing markets, uh, festivals. This upcoming year is going to be a busy fall for us. We've, we've not we've not got to experience the fall markets. Everybody that uh, I've talked to 
people, you know, the suppliers that I work with and everything uh, say that, you know, the fall is probably the the best time of year for, for well, campus. Did I see this at Grit and Grace on the, right as you walk in on the right? Was no, that, we're not we're not in Grit and Grace but, yet. But were you there? No, we wasn't. So, not, uh, not inside. We were at the market outside. They oh, have that's outdoor what, that's what I was thinking, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I've got my application. It's hard to get in Grit and Grace unless somebody just, you know, moves out. Why, I mean, you've why? got... Is it just so many? Space limited. I mean, they don't. They just don't have the space. But I've got my application what the, submitted. Uh, what about the antique parlor down on the Grove Avenue? I don't know if they the, have as much traffic, but I don't know about that place. What I'm looking for is you know different places in Cleveland that I can approach. Uh, you know, I approached that uh, little restaurant up there in, in mm -hmm. uh, Polk County and just code. Just walked in. And well, just, it, it come across my wife knew this lady that. Uh, this was her uh, niece, or some somehow it came about that. She was telling my wife about it. So, hey, my, my niece is opening up this new restaurant in Benton, and she's going to have she's going to be selling uh, crafts and stuff up there. You know, your husband may be interested in doing that. So, I contacted her, <clears throat> and she got my information. I initially just wanted to put them in there on consignment, and she said, "No, I'd rather you know just buy them straight out wholesale." you know, work your wholesale price up. And at the time, I, you know, I wasn't really familiar with the wholesale side of it or anything. So I thought about it and thought about it. And finally, I come to, a, you know, come to a price that I could sell or wholesale and, you know, me still make money too. So there's a retail price and a wholesale price. You've they are now. They're <laughs> they, they wasn't starting out. I was just yeah. going to sell them for a set price mm -hmm. and not even think about wholesale. But, you know, I would, you know, if it wasn't too much trouble, just go into a shop and say, hey, you know, if you want to display my candles on consignment, that way there won't be any money out of your pocket, won't be, you know, anything like that. And That's then you, you'll it. get a percentage, you know, 10%, 20% of whatever I sell. And, uh, you know, then that way you won't have any investment tied up in it. But I guess they'd have towed out sales tax and all that stuff, right? They would have, I guess. yeah. And at markets, I have my, my, my taxes and everything are built into the price of my candle, so I don't have to, you know, what price you see there mm -hmm. is what price you're paying. That makes it simpler. That makes it simpler, yeah. How much is this jar? The large jars I sell for 18, and the small ones I sell for 12. So what about, uh, like, the Chattanooga market? The, what, what's that, that thing that they have on weekends? There's a lot of uh, Chattanooga festivals. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a uh, there's a couple of ladies that do, I mean, promoters for, for these festivals in uh, Chattanooga. I know the one, uh, they have a big one at Bradley Square Mile there in the spring mm -hmm. uh, time, and then they have one down at the uh, uh, Greenway. And they used to have the Billy Nipper, remember that? Did you ever go to the Billy Nipper on, at Red Clay? <sighs> They had that festival have, every year. I don't think. It, but do you remember I that? I remember it now since you mentioned My it. My grandmother because, used to, because that's what that was for. Exactly. Back in the day. And then you had Kettner's Mill, which we're looking at going to. Was uh, it Kettner's or? Kettner's. No, Prater. So, what about Prater? Prater's Mill Same is down. Thing, right? Yeah, Prater's Mill is down uh, north Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, go down, I think, down Dalton Pike, down that mm -hmm. way. They're not having it this year. I checked in on that So one. this is nothing new. This that's thing. nothing new. No. The, what makes my candles unique is so, I mean the fact of doing crafts and so well, yeah. would you say this is a craft? Yeah, yeah, it is a craft. It falls under the craft category. So, but you know, what if somebody gave you a scent and said, uh, "This is my my grandmother's Bible, mm -hmm. and it has this distinct smell." Could you make a candle that smelled I like could her bottle? Probably come close to it. I mean, speaking of, I mean, if you speaking of that particular scent, I've already got a scent, and that's that Narnia that I was telling about earlier. That kind of smelled like an old library. That would probably well, but, be but, one of the closest. I would probably have to smell whatever they're wanting me to uh, but, mimic. So it would be. I mean, what they, would people I, I give for that, right? Well, I mean, if. They, just, if and you know, it wouldn't have to smell like it, but they thought it smelled like right. it. You know, exactly. Close like enough. Uh, Papaw's pipe. But here. that really smells like a pipe. Yeah. I mean, I thought if you had to, if it didn't have the label on it, I'd thought I'd have I'd yep. pick that out. And that's a good that's a good seller. And and you're you're talking about having a store behind a candle when I'm when I'm at a market or something like that, and somebody's looking at one of these candles or something. I'll tell them a brief history behind how that mm -hmm. candle become mm -hmm. that name, and uh, you know. Uh, 
you, you would be surprised. A lot of people are very interested in that. Me talking to them. my wife when I first started this, I had more masculine sense that I had picked out that I was wanting to you know make. Yeah. And she said you need to make more feminine sense uh, because I mean, women buy more candles than men do. And mm -hmm. I started thinking, so, oh well, yeah, I better you know start getting some more flowery scents and um, stuff like that, uh, food scents or mm -hmm. fragrances and stuff. And um, funny, the first market we did, all the ladies was flocking to the masculine scents. Mm -hmm. So I just asked one of them. I said, why do you like these over the more feminine flowery mm -hmm. scents, uh, fragrances, or you know? The fruity uh, fragrances. They said, "Oh no, we 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 love this this side up." So I looked at my wife and I said, "Hey, I was going in the right <laughs> direction, and you detoured me yeah. off, so I had to go back to step maybe one the women again." Normally, would maybe they're more attracted to masculine. Maybe you make one that smells like men sweat. <laughs> I'm talking about that. I was on my way in uh, here to the show, and uh, I passed Chick Fil A there on Paul Huff, and they had a maple. Pecan bacon milkshake mm -hmm. advertised. Golly, I can't imagine Maple, that. pecan, and bacon milkshake. Uh -huh. And I thought, hey, that'd, that'd make for a good candle yeah. right there. Or maybe you could make a candle that says uh, chopping wood. Yep. And you say that because these are all my, some of these are year-round scents, but I'm coming out, I've probably got 20 or 30 different fragrances I'm t currently testing right mm -hmm. now for, for the fall and upcoming Christmas mm -hmm. season. Yeah. And one of those is, uh, I think it's called Fireside Embers or something mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. Open that up, and you know how a campfire smells? Mm -hmm. It smelled just Golly. like a campfire. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't believe it. I told my wife, I said, I want you to smell this. Mm -hmm. I said, it smells just like a burning campfire. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait to get that, that well, in a candle. Be a hit. I hope so. I can't wait to get that in a candle and uh, mm -hmm. uh, burn one and see what it, you know, how it does. If you had metal cans, would they be cheaper? Or is it... Or is the glass, you find the glass is reusable as far as for something else? I guess it's reusable, isn't it? There, it is. I mean, um, they also make candles in, you've seen these wooden dobos? Mm -hmm. uh, my, my daughter had one that she wanted me to uh, refill for and re-wick for mm -hmm. uh, that she'd had, you know, years ago. And I did. And I started looking at those dobos, and I started thinking, I said, man, you know, those would be, that would go into my country I tried to have a rustic country type uh, mm -hmm. atmosphere. Yeah. And I said those would fit perfectly, but you can't get no insurance on. In, uh, insurers won't uh, insure them because they're such a, a fire hazard. Oh. And I started thinking, I said, yeah, I don't think I want to deal with those. And I, I made that one for my daughter, but you know. So you could actually recandle, recandle, I guess you could, that'd be it. Yeah, I mean, if someone wanted me wanted to bring the their vessel back to me and they refill it, their special vessel. Yeah, I mean, and again, that's mm -hmm. another thing. Actually, my wife mentioned that uh, she said, "Billy, once you have, uh, you know, get it out there that hey, if someone has a special vessel that they mm -hmm. want a candle in, mm -hmm. you know, we can do that." Yeah, it wouldn't have to be it a candle cost, thing. Yeah, it wouldn't Not cost you the the vessel the vessel part of it. Uh, something special to them. It's something special to them, and you know. Yeah, we can, we can do that. And that's why part of my uh, company's name or, uh, is got custom in it. Yeah. It's because I can do stuff like that for individuals uh, if they want it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, a, I'm not just tied down to a jar or a plastic container for a wax melt or anything like that. So if anybody out there is you know, looking for something you know special, uh, I'm actually working with a lady in Athens right now. She's got a wedding venue, and um, she's got an event coming up here in September. Um, her little wedding venue is called Country Cove, and she's wanting me to get a brochure made up of my candles because she's going to start including it in with her uh, wedding packages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if the you know the couples mm -hmm. want to include uh, candles in their wedding uh, on the tables, on the right. tables, or, or anything like that, or actually. I can actually put the picture of the groom, the bride and groom, on the front of the candle, and that can be a keepsake for them. That's right. And so, you can have a scent that's called wedding. Called wedding. I know. I we had our uh, my daughter's baby shower, and I made uh, small tins uh, in uh, Johnson's baby powder scent fragrance, mm. and I had like thirty of them set out on a table 
for all the guests that come to my college. Well, that, sm that smell makes you feel cooler, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. I don't I know mean, why that it is. Baby, but... That baby powder smell brought back Me all old, kinds of memories. Old, all kinds of memories. And do you uh, think everything we do is just struggling for more memories? It is for me. <laughs> I mean, Isn't that sad? I that forgot all, a whole lot it, of my memories. It all boils down to memories. Well, what else have you got? They, I mean, what if, Nothing. I mean, yeah. If it wasn't for our memories of past experiences and everything, I mean, you know. That's really, it's almost it's sad, sad that it boils it? down to yep. that. It's kind of sad, but and that's the way it is. But you ever, you ever notice you go to a trip and you, like the Kentucky Derby, mm -hmm. you went to that trip. You don't remember the horse that was racing. No. What you bet. You remember having to sleep in the van. Yep. I remember the highlights, like walking or in the, that. Or the troubles. Walking in that biker's bar and yeah. seeing all those young people yeah. flock over uh, this little 61 year old. Except if you go out of town on vacation, you won't remember the vacation as much as you will the, the flat tire you had yep. going to the vacation. Yep. And talking about that going to Florida, they, uh, one year there was a bunch of us that went. Uh, my dad had just bought a brand new customized van. Mm -hmm. And me and uh, uh, a bunch of us was wanting to go to Florida on a deep sea fishing trip. Mm -hmm. And I begged my dad, I said, please let me take that van. I'll take care of it. I won't, you know, here I was 20 years old, 21 yeah. years old. He said, I ain't letting you take my van. There's no way. You, you take your truck and, you know, your buddies can drive their vehicles and you're not taking my van. I said, come on, Dad, I'll take care of it. I promise I won't, you know, won't let nothing happen to it. Mm -hmm. So he finally let me. So we drove down there. We went on our fishing trip. We had a whole ice cooler full of fish. And we was headed back. And something happened to the van in Atlanta. Golly. And it broke down. So, well, I take it back. There's one of, one of the guys drove his truck down there. So we all piled into his truck, left the van uh, wherever it was, piled in his truck. And then I was going to go home and have my dad and him or me ride back to Atlanta and whatever's wrong with it, I can't remember what happened now, a belt broke or something, yeah. best I can remember. And um, <clears throat> so it was middle of the summer. We rode back in the middle of the night, back to Cleveland, told my dad about it. He said, okay, that's fine. We'll go down uh, next day and uh, figure out what's wrong with it. I forgot about we had that cooler full of fish. forgot about that we had the cooler full of fish in the back. Uh. And when he opened that door up, God. that smell of rotten fish just hit me because it was sitting right down in the middle of Atlanta in the heat of the day, Man. in the mi middle of summer. You and a... I was, you talking about somebody, you know, I, I, can't, I can't say on here the words he said when he first opened and the door. And he was right, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yep. So from that day on, I, I never heard the last of that. I think that van had still had fish smell in it. The time from all the way up until the time he sold it, but uh, it, I it, think it, he it. sold it to JT actually. <laughs> How do people buy these if they want to buy one? Because that's what it's all about, right? Sales. How do they buy them? Well, I've got a. Uh, of course, it's probably where you saw it at uh, on, my, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I've got yep. a Candy Street Custom Candles Facebook page. If they can go on there, uh, all the information's there. Um, with a, how do they how do they they click on something or do they go to no there's not an automatic way I mean you just have to contact me through email right. or contact so me you through sell Facebook. some through that I I, I haven't yet mm -hmm. but you know that's my plan that's the and then my plan is to also have a web page uh, developed because it just started really in no you're just now it getting just started rolling. I've only did like probably let me think I've only did like three or four festivals mm -hmm. or markets yeah and um you know I started in November making candles out of little small tins and mm -hmm. introducing them to my uh, family members mm -hmm. during Christmas time. Say, hey, you take these candles and see what you think and everything. And my wife is still rolling her eyes in the back of her head thinking I was crazy going, oh, he's gone off on yeah. another tangent. <laughs> and um, then after Christmas, I uh, was getting some feedback from them on what they liked or what I could do better or whatever and that. So I, I kind of adjusted and, you know, uh, to what the comments I was getting back from them mm -hmm. and uh, whether it's good or bad. And um, so we did our first market in March in Charleston at the little store up there, Charleston Bait and Tackle. Mm -hmm. And um, there was only like six or seven vendors up there. And uh, I thought, you know, this will be something to get my feet wet. Mm -hmm. And they, we did extremely well up mm -hmm. there. The lady in the store had a, one of my candles of blackberry sangria there. Mm -hmm. 
had it burning in the store, and I sold out every one of those. People coming out of the store wanting to, want one of those candles because they walked in, they smelled that candle in the mm-hmm. in the store, mm-hmm. and uh, it did. I walked in the uh, store, and she had it burning, and then as soon as you walked in there, that's the first thing you smelled. Smell and, is one of the six senses or five, right? Yep, and the funny thing about it, once COVID hit, me and my wife both had COVID, and it messed up some of her scents. So mm-hmm. some, a lot of these fragrances here, she can't even smell. And I said, I can't believe that you can't smell this. I mean, it's a pretty strong fragrance. Mm-hmm. And she said, I can't smell that one, but I can smell this one. So, I mean, she's kind of hit and miss on what she can smell and not. And I said, it well, may come back, her honest I, smell. Yeah, we, she hopes it does, but, yeah. you know, but um, that's one of the things that, you know, carried on with her after uh, she recovered from COVID. But. So you'd go, on, uh, you'd go on to Facebook and go to Candy's Can- Creek. Custom Candles. Custom Candles. Yep. Obviously, Candy, Candy's Creek is because you're from that area. Yep. I wanted to, and again, I wanted to name that after, you know, you know, where I was from, right. currently anyway. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. born and raised out well, there in that area. That's really the same place you're but here. But Candy's Creek resonates with me all the way from the time I was little because I used to go fishing with my dad at Candy's Creek yeah. in a little aluminum boat fishing for crappie. Yeah. And uh, so, I'm, you know, Candy's Creek, that word, that description has been around for me for ever since I was probably you five, know, six years old. People should order this for a, for a Christmas order of pack a ten that way they if they forget or somebody gets them something they've already got something on hand to give them there you go yep and you know i uh i haven't worked out you know anything like that with anybody yet again you know my my little business is just now starting mm-hmm. up and i think you know the small business is the backbone of our community it is and i mean if you can't support small business and you just keep going to these large retail uh, outlets and or large chain outlets. Then I mean, the small business guys just going to, you know, before long just dry up and wither away. And I'm well, and there's just something to be said about somebody that that did it themselves. I don't, I can't explain what it is, but it's it's just different, isn't it? Because well, you could buy this somewhere for. Ten bucks. Ten, I guess. Yeah. I, of course, I think something like this is probably ten bucks at Walmart. At, it it at is. Big lot. It it's is. not like it's fifty cents. Yeah, go 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 out there and support. You know, a chain outfit mm-hmm. that the money's not going to stay in our community and not going to be reinvested into something else and everything. And you know, if everybody did that, then I mean, the small business the small business owner was really hurt during COVID. Mm-hmm. I mean. They were really, really mm-hmm. hurting, and I mean, and a lot of a lot of them never recovered after COVID, and uh, some of them did. Some of them are still getting over it. Yeah, and some of them are still getting over it, but some of them closed up in the middle of, middle of it. And I remember a little uh, ice cream shop up on a, uh, uh, up above, uh, right across from Life Care uh, Nursing Home. Uh, they had a little uh, ice cream shop there, and uh, we used to go in there uh, by the grandkids. Ice oh cream yeah, stuff. yeah, 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 and. Uh, uh, he had to close up because of COVID, mm-hmm. but um, and COVID and taxes are a super, bad thing. <laughs> super. Yeah, he was a super nice guy. I hated to see that you know he couldn't make it, but he, you know, he, he tried. Yeah, right? but um, and you don't know, you don't never know if you're going to make it unless you try. I mean, I may, I may hopefully grow this to a, a point where my wife can have something to do uh, after she retires. Mm-hmm. Uh, or we may find out that hey, you know, this ain't clicking, and we'll just have to put it to the side. But you know, well, if it's a hobby and it keeps you busy, it's got to be worth something. Even it is, if, even if you kind of break even. If it's paying you for the hobby, it's right. I mean, golfing's expensive. Exactly. And my oldest son, I mean, there's no telling how much money he spends on golf. That's his big deal right there. He just come back from a trip in North Carolina. Him Probably and spent three thousand dollars. There's no something. telling. Well, I mean, he don't never disclose yeah. to me what he spends or yeah. anything, and, and that's that's him. But you know, that's his big thing right there. That's something I never got into. I wanted to try to get into it just so I could, you know, have something to do with him. Yeah, and I went up plenty of times, but you know, kind of gets old chasing balls uh, in the in the rough and everything. Yeah, it's not my thing. It takes you know, so long. Trouncing through the bushes and stuff, trying to find my ball. You gotta, be, you gotta be there at the tea time and that. Yep. That's always nerve wracking. And him standing there waiting on me uh, on the green, and I'm still yeah. back here. <laughs> Trying to you know, dig I, your way out. I just, drove, I just drove one 
50 yards yeah. and <laughs> he's hit one 300 yards yeah. and up there waiting on me. So but, how many mulligans do I have or whatever yeah. that? So I told him, I said, son, if you ever want me to go golfing with you again, I'll just drive the car for you and be your, yeah. you know, personal caddy. So what kind of the Olympics? I haven't, I, I wonder why g gymnast is, gymnastics is in the summer Olympics. You ever wonder about that? Cause that's in the ins, that's on the inside. inside. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't no, make I, sense to me, uh -uh. does it? Dude? No. As I was leaving, coming here, they had a. I think the swimming was on. And uh, only thing I can get into is maybe I like the volleyball, and I like the track, the, mm -hmm. the running. But other than that, I don't know. Maybe the diving some, but I don't. Yeah. Know. It takes so long for them to get up there and the next person to dive. Well, I can tell you, they've had so much. I think they even have ping pong now as part of the. Yeah, uh, and some kind of air guns that yeah. I saw this morning. Yeah. And I don't even have a a list of what they're doing. I'd like to get into it if I could. Well, but the thing about it is, I mean, none of this is live, so that's kind of what takes a little bit away from from it uh, for me. Yeah, it is. Then, you know the time the time difference and everything. Yeah. So, I mean, you may hear about it on the news or on Google or on a something that pops up on your phone or whatever before you even see before it. Before you even see it, mm -hmm. so you know that that takes away from it a little bit. But well, they've done a number on that Olympics. It just seems like it's. It used to be a big deal to every two years. Well, how long does it last? Like two weeks or three? Uh, yeah, I think they said August 18th or something. It was a, a So we're going to get all of it we want. So we're going to get all of it we want, yeah. And luckily, I mean, football season will be coming up pretty soon, so mm -hmm. you know, we'll have that to look forward to, especially college football. Well, listen, I hope you – tell people how they get a hold of your candles again. Well, everyone, uh, currently we're on Facebook right now. Um Candy's Creek Custom Candles, and um, if you're interested, just give me a uh, shout out through email. I think my phone number's there on the website. You can leave me a message, and um, I'll I'll get back with you. Um, if not, you can see me in some markets up this upcoming September. We're going to be at Country Cove. Uh, we're going to be at the Drink and Grace uh, in the fall. Uh, we also plan on being at a place in Athens called Pumpkin Town, and um, um going to be doing several shows um, off of uh, from Grit and Grace. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of new scents to come. A lot of new fragrances and scents to come, yeah. Um, and again, you know, we don't mind you sticking your nose in our business, so just remember that. <laughs> hey, I appreciate hey, it, buddy. I enjoyed talking to you.